episode 40 of the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast. My name is Lisa. I am coming to you from Long Island, New York. Thankfully, we have another day in the low 60s all of a sudden, which is kind of weird because yesterday it was in like the high 40s for a large part of the day. So I am not complaining. I'm just trying to film on days where the weather is the warmest right now. Um, yeah, so, all right, before we get into all of the knitting that I've been doing and all of that fun stuff, um, I just wanted to go over the giveaway. So for last episode, episode 39, um, I have run a giveaway for celebrating the one year anniversary of the Stop, Drop, and It podcast. So I did not at the time of filming have a prize in hand. I did insert a picture of it, but I didn't like show it to you guys or talk about it. So um, I wanted to show you the prize and I also wanted to let you guys know that I'm gonna keep the giveaway open for one more week to give all of you who might not have had a chance to watch the episode yet a chance because I know I have a lot of loyal subscribers that just sometimes get behind on my episodes and because I'm celebrating one year it's because of you guys that I am at the one year mark and for all of you who have been subscribing and just keeping up with me for that long so I want to give you guys all a chance to enter so I'm gonna keep the giveaway open for one more week you need to be subscribed to my podcast and comment on last week's episode so last week's episode is episode 39 and I think the title of it is like celebrating one year of stop drop in it or something like that so should be should be super simple to find so after recording the episode last week I did finally get to my local yarn shop which the one closest to me that I went to is the Knitting Cove in Port Jefferson I think it had been a good year actually since I had been there I haven't gone in there since before Christmas last year so it was good to see them again over there and they had some beautiful yarn that I had never seen before um, I have seen that they carried this brand before but previously I had only seen like their singles version and not this one so I picked up two skeins of this beautiful DK weight yarn this is less traveled yarn and I've never worked with it before so um, I'm super excited so these two skeins are going in the giveaway so we've got this beautiful color that is called olive and it's got just it's kind of like a beautiful shade of greenish grayish blue it's it's stunning and then I picked up this one to go with it so this one is like a tonal gray. I think the green is, is kind of tonal too. It's just on camera, it's not showing up quite as tonal as, as the gray is. Um, and then this color is called obsidian. So this is 100% merino and it is USA sourced, spun and dyed. And each skein has 180 yards. So each is a 50 gram skein. So it's a total of 100 grams of yarn in two complementary colors that I thought a lot of people would like these colors. So that's why I chose these two. I thought they were beautiful. So um, yeah, so these are for the giveaway. Plus I got like a cute little a cute little tape measure to throw in that kind of matched the yarn too. I don't think I have that out here with me, but yeah. So if you want to enter to win this yarn, <clears throat> go ahead and comment on episode 39 and um, be sure to watch the episode because it's not like just a random comment. Like I asked you guys to uh, say something very specific. So yeah, be sure to watch that episode and yeah, I, I'm excited about this. I picked up a few for myself too because I was excited to work with it. So yeah, I'll, I'll show you the ones I got for myself uh, in acquisitions at the end of this episode. So yeah, um, let's see. I'll put these over here. I feel like I feel like I didn't really get a whole lot of knitting done this week. I definitely didn't knit on every project that I wanted to. There's going to be no shawlography update this week because I haven't touched it. But I did finally get started on a new project and really excited about that one because it uses my hand spun. 
Um, I've been doing a ton of natural dyeing, a ton. I cannot stop dyeing yarn. So I brought some of the best ones out here to show you guys um, in the, my natural dyeing segment. Um, let's see. I brought my spinning out, so hopefully I'll have a chance to show you my spinning. I filmed a spin with me video. I was trying something new and I released that yesterday. So this would be Wednesday, today's Thursday. Um, so I know um, a lot of you guys said you wanted to see more spinning or some of you said you wanted to see more spinning. And since I didn't have time to show the spinning in last week's episode, I had filmed a separate spin with me so that I could just sit and spin a little bit. Um, so yeah, so let me know what you think about that. I have also been filming for you guys who said that you wanted to see more foraging and stuff related to the dyeing. So I went out two times so far this week on foraging, looking for mushrooms, and I did film a bunch of things. So I'm not sure when I'll get that video out because I, I might go out tomorrow. We're supposed to have some pretty good weather tomorrow too. So I think I might go out again tomorrow and then maybe I'll combine that into one big vlog style video. I've got some other little segments uh, like non-foraging, not segments, but little snippets of what I was doing um, interspersed in there. So I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy that and it should be some really cool stuff to look at. Um, I found a lot of different types of mushrooms yesterday that I had never seen before and I'm pretty excited about that. So um, yeah, a lot of you said that you're especially interested in the natural dyeing stuff. So a few of you said you wanted to see videos of me actually foraging. So I thought that that would be fun to try. So yeah, I'm interested to, to see how the, how I can put all of that footage together into a fun video vlog, kind of like a vlog style. I've got a cat behind me now. This is not my tail. Oh, there she goes. Hey, you want to be in my video again? This is Melody. She is a cat that my parents kind of adopted and she is, she's my parents cat. She's inside and outside. I have my own cat who is an indoor only cat. So he will make an appearance in one of my vlogs, I'm sure. So yeah, I thought maybe doing some vlogs, especially as we'll be moving. Oh, the cat just knocked my camera. <laughs> it's okay. Especially as we're gonna be moving in another month or so, um, I'll have more privacy and a space indoors of my own. So yeah, so I'm excited to try some new things this year and just show you guys some different snippets of what I do than I typically go over finished and in progress things in my podcast. So that was a long introduction, but um, yeah, so let's just get into the knitting stuff now. Let's start with what am I wearing? Okay, so today I pulled out my Long Island shawl. It might have a different name now, but when I knit this pattern, a couple of years ago, I want to say maybe three now, maybe it's been three years. Um, it was called the Long Island Shop. And this was a pattern that I got for free with purchase. My, so my husband purchased all of this beautiful yarn for me. It's a little pilled. I need to depill it. I actually need to block it too. I've never blocked this. So I'm kind of considering blocking it finally. Um, because I think that'll just give me a little bit more, more length. Um, but yeah, my husband had gifted me 10 skeins of this beautiful, bulky alpaca silk merino yarn for Christmas four years ago, I think, something like that. And th so that was like my big Christmas present because uh, Long Island's yarn and farm, Tabitha's yarn is quite luxurious and worth absolutely every penny, but a sweater quantity is, you know, it, it's a good, it's a good budget commitment there. So, um, yeah. So this was like my big pr Christmas present. I think I want to say four years ago. And so I, I knit it up, and I'll show you. It does need to be, <coughs> excuse me. It does need to be depilled a bit, 
but this was also before I knew that I was twisting my knit stitches. I used to accidentally knit into the back of the stitch all the time instead of the front of the stitch. So this was supposed to be like a, a twisted rib stitch or maybe it was not supposed to be, I don't remember, but I think I, ac I actually like ended up not twisting the stitches because normally my stitches would be twisted. This was back when I was less experienced than I am now. So I, I think that this just looks like a regular like one pearl rib, but I think the, t the stitches are technically supposed to be twisted and these are not twisted. So, oops. Um, you know, you get, you get better with every project and you, you pick up on things that you didn't know that you were doing wrong once upon a time and you just, you get better and light bulbs go off and you just, you realize that, oh, I've been doing that wrong all this time. Why was I doing that? And so, yeah. So anyway, this is something that I throw on all the time uh, at this time of year. Let me stand up. Um, so you can see that why I want to block it is it kind of, it's a, so it's a shawl. Basically, I'll take it off and show you. I've shown this before on my podcast, but it's been a while. Basically, this is a long rectangle with two holes in the middle for sleeves. So I never quite know which way is the right side or the wrong side or upside down or, oh, that's actually really cozy too. <laughs> um, oops, banged my elbow. Yeah, I have no idea which is like, which is up, which is down, which is front, which is back. Whatever way my arms go in is fine. It's, it's totally reversible. But I never blocked it because, you know, this was four years ago and I didn't know about blocking then. Or if I knew about it, I hadn't at, I at least hadn't done it yet. So I didn't know how to do it. And so I, I just never, ever, ever get it. Every year I mean to block this and then I never get around to it. So since I'm wearing this today, I think what I'll do is this evening, I'll just, I'll soak it in some water and some, uh, in some Euclid and water, give it a little bit of a wash and then get it out of my blocking mats. And yeah, I mean, I would like to get a little bit more, like it, it does come up to, you know, it doesn't cover my butt and it definitely, I think it could be longer in the front. So I don't know, I think I'll give blocking this a try. So, all right, um, so that's it for what am I wearing. I don't remember like the name or the color of this yarn, but it's beautiful. It's got like all of these little specks of color in and in it. So that's super fun. Um, so let's, I have a new cast on to share with you guys. So let's go on into whips because it is related to this shawl. Okay. so. Last year sometime, Tabitha was, I don't know, I'm assuming that she probably still does this, maybe not regularly, but she posts all the time on Instagram stories. And sometimes I keep up all the time and other times I just don't get around to checking stories for like a long time. So there was a time last year, and maybe she's doing this now, you guys can certainly go to her stories and check, where she would take Fridays throughout the day on Fridays and she would take pictures of like some yarn that she had that wasn't in her shop for one reason or the other. It was maybe like, like this one was a one of a kind and I know it doesn't look one of a kind because it matches this, but that's why I picked it up. Um, so yeah, this was, this was like a one of a kind, maybe it was shorter yardage or I don't, I don't know. This is a worsted weight. This one's a bulky. And I want to say that this, because it looks so similar, that it was, it was just probably something like maybe she was trying in the spinning process to figure out, like she doesn't spin, but she sends it, she works with somebody um, who spins, who spins the wool. And yeah, so Anyway, even though this looks similar to colors that she has offered, for some reason this was a one of a kind. 
and she often will put up things that either maybe had a knot in it so like she it's not up to her standard quality to put in the shop as like a regular price item so she hangs on to it and then like you know things like that she'll put up on Instagram and she used to do this on Fridays and it was just like a she'd put the yarn at a, at a price and sometimes she'll group them together as a package and you know sometimes it's like leftovers from sample knits put together in something so she would do that and so one day I was on Instagram at the right time and I saw this yarn come up and I said, that looks a lot like the yarn for this vest, for this wrap. And she just had one skein of it. And um, she was she offers a hat pattern with any purchase of a worsted weight skein. If you want, you can ask for the, I think it's called the slouchy farmer's cap pattern. So I bought this last year with the intention of knitting this hat so that I would have a hat that just went really well with this shawl and I think it's pretty much perfect even if it's not exactly the same it's it's certainly close enough um, and so I started working on this like two nights ago I just I pulled it out I said you know what it's time I knit myself another hat because really I think I've only ever knit myself two hats so it was time for a new hat and I knew that I had this and I knew exactly where it was so I wound it up and I cast it on and so I will insert a picture of this I think it's the slouchy farmer's cap I believe that this is a pattern that you can only get through Tabitha through the purchase of her yarn so when you purchase it, it just takes one worsted weight skein of her yarn and the pattern was written especially for this yarn so this um it's like a little bit it feels more maybe Aran weight to me you know so it might not work with just like any random worsted weight scheme i feel like hers is maybe a little thicker or a little bit more bulk to it um where's the label here's the label so this is like her old label like so she's had this she she has rebranded no, 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 no. This says Long Island Yarn and Farm. Okay, so she used to be Long Island Livestock Company, so her tags used to say that. So this is uh, 100 yards. The color is Odromeda, and it is worsted weight, 10% silk, sorry, silk, 60% alpaca, and 30% merino wool. So that's what this is, and I'm already halfway through. Oops. In there. I'm already halfway through the hat pattern so it's got a very long ribbing and then it's gonna be like stock in that and then do decreases so hopefully I will get this done tonight I had intended to get it done in time for podcasting today but I got foraging and then I got dyeing yarn when I got home and yeah so I just I just didn't get around to sitting down with this again until today so I'm gonna try to get this done tonight so I'll have a finished object next week so and I will also report on this pattern because yeah I've only got hats with pom-poms I don't have any slouchy hats this one does not have a pom-pom could put one on it probably but yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how this turns out. So I'm excited to have a new hat for myself. Um, all right, so speaking of hats, you guys. Speaking of hats. My Mosselberg hat. I had already, I had already ripped most of it out when you guys told me, it, Lisa, it's going to be way too big. I, I, I was already there by the time I got those comments on the podcast. Um, yeah, so, all right, let's troubleshoot this thing because I've since re-knit almost everything that I ripped out. So I've got a, a bit less hat than I showed you last week, but it is going much better now. So, all right, this is looking so much better. It's, it's looking more like this tube shape that it's supposed to. So let me show you what I was doing because what happened and which why it was too big and why I ripped it out 
back to almost like, I ripped it back all the way to where the increases stopped, just a couple rows past that, because my gauge was on at that point. And so what I realized was that my gauge, so if you're not familiar with this pattern or you haven't seen me talk about it before, all right, so this is my first muscle burrow hat. It's a pattern by Isolde Teague and it's really clever. It starts at the crown and you just choose what yarn you wanna use. And then you, after you have like enough material, like an inch or so, you measure your gauge. You figure out what, how many stitches per inch you have over one inch approximately. So when I did that, my gauge was seven stitches per inch. And then, so I chose the extra large size to knit for Bryce because he's got a really big head and we measured his head and he was like just about, he was like half an inch, within half an inch of the extra large size anyway. So it was looking really big and I'm sure you guys all remember last time how big this looked. It still looks really big, but that's because it's not a hat for me, it's for him. This looks so much better though. What happened was my gauge, which was seven stitches per inch when I measured it at first, changed, drastically changed to five stitches per inch. And I know why, I know why it happened. Okay, so the extra large size is a 26 inch circumference, I think, is what it was. And I've got a 24 inch cable needle. And so what I was doing, you see how when I stretch this, like I can just knit in the round like this, but you see automatically how big that makes that and how much stretched out the fabric becomes when I do that. So that's what I was doing because I was like, oh, it's so close. I can just easily knit in a circle and a circle and go around and around. And I don't have to fuss with uh, pulling on the cord and the stitches to do magic loop because it just, it, I can just knit around and around and around. That changed my gauge. So don't do that. If it's, if, if like you have to stretch it just a little bit to be able to go around and around in a circle so anyway, so that's why it got so big. So now I am magic looping like I should be, and I am making sure that I pull the cord and that I knit my stitches close together like I usually do. And this really seems to be working much better. Um, I haven't actually rechecked my gauge. I should do that. Maybe I'll check it and I'll like, I'll put a little note in at the bottom of the screen confirming that we are still on gauge at this point. I think we are. So yeah, so this is, I think that this is looking much better. I, I no longer feel like this is just enormous. And so I would say that I am really, I probably have a couple more inches to go maybe until here to be at like the halfway point. I think so and you can see like where I still have a bunch of yarn in the middle here that's just like wrapped around from when I ripped it out so I haven't quite re-knit everything that I ripped out but I am well on my way um, just to go over one more time this amazing yarn is by Knit Circus and it is a hundred percent BFL it is a fingering weight and the colorway is The Great Pumpkin, inspired by The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. So yeah, uh, Charlie Brown is my husband's favorite. And so yeah, it's, it's like a theme. I, I choose things for him that have something to do with Charlie Brown. So this time it is the yarn colorway. I think it's gorgeous. I love it. And I really hope I'm still on gauge. I think I am. But I'll, I'll measure, I'll measure before I, before I release this video and I will edit in down here what my stitches per inch currently is, if it's still the same 
I hope it is. All right, so that is the woe of my muscle burra hat story. So I just shoved my yarn in there. And yeah. All right. Um, I have, what else do I have? Oh, all right. We'll start. I'm going to end with my most exciting thing. So as I said, I have not touched shawlography this week. So I'm still on clue three. Um, yeah, so I haven't even finished clue three. I've got four more rows to go on shawlography clue three, but we're getting there. And then I will, I'll, I'll get back on it this week. I'll get back to shawlography because if I don't, it, it will never get done. And I really love it and I really want it to get done. So yeah, all right. Um, let's do this one. All right, so I have one more really quick whip update before I get to like the new exciting thing. Okay. So last week, and I'll do this again because I know you guys like to see this, so I don't, I don't mind showing you this again really quick. So my latest brand ambassador project is using this beautiful color burst yarn so i'm a brand ambassador for wonderland yarns and they have a color burst yarn that has you know it's like mostly tonal solid with a burst of color and some of you guys said thank you for showing the yarn in the skein and not twist it up and then in the cake and then knit it up um, you guys said it really helps you to see like what the yarn itself looks like in different stages So I'm gonna do that again just because I have that here. It's really easy um, So this is one of their new fall colors. It is color burst number 19 Splashing through puddles and these are my favorite colors in the world I think this is the only purple project I'm showing you guys today like last week we're like everything I showed you was purple so um, let me untwist it so that you guys can see how they dye it up so it's it's mostly purple but it's got this one little burst of color all right so that's that's what that looks up and then if you guys want to see like how do I twist up a skein you basically like I stick one thumb in each end I twist 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 because I used to be really bad at this but I I'm getting better and then I whoops kind of over twisted that a little bit kind of find a spot in the middle and this was not the best example of that but you get the idea you get the idea sometimes it comes out perfect and other times yeah it has a little over twist in it in a spot whatever that's what it looks like and so then when I caked it up it looks like this so you know mostly purple with just little spots of the blue and then so I finished this piece of my cardigan so it's still on the needles I need to put this on waist yarn but this is how it looks knitted up and there is a bit of shaping so the stripe the stripey color burst bits change direction and are clumped together differently just depending on how the shaping is but then let's see the bottom couple of inches here are fairly fairly consistent knitting so like if you had something without much shaping it would look like more like that um so the pattern that i'm knitting is the modernist and it is a cardigan by renee callahan of east london knits and so it starts i've got basically i've got the left front panel completely finished there will be ribbing about like that much ribbing um yeah so i've got like the left front panel of my cardigan all finished it's gonna be very boxy so the shoulder you know it goes off off shoulder until about there before there will be sleeves your tail is in my face kitty so yeah, so I didn't, you know, I wasn't too far away from finishing the front last time, but I did get that done. I just have to go ahead and put, 
go ahead and put this on some waste yarn now so that I can reclaim my needles or at least change the tips. I am using interchangeable so I could just put it on a different cord and put some stoppers on down there. Um, yeah, so that I can then basically do this opposite of this and get the right front done or at least started. So that is the progress of my modernist Cardi. And all right, I have to go run in the house super quick and just I've got some uh, yarn mordanting on the stove. It's not, it's just on, on low right now. So I'm just gonna go turn the stove off. I am multitasking today. I'm gonna turn the stove off and then I am gonna show you my really exciting whip project with my hand spun. I'm so excited about it. So excited. That's like, I got addicted to knitting on this one this week. So. All right, I'll be right back. Okay guys, I am back and I am so excited to share this next project with you. I showed it to you once before, but I had not yet gotten to the color work section. So I had only gotten like the cast on. Oh, just lost a bag, that's okay. Project bag down, project bag down in the wind. All right, oh, that's kind of falling out of the middle there. Oh, hold on, yarn unwinding. So, all right, this is a project that I am using my hand spun for in combination with some Harrisville Designs mill ends. I have no idea how much yardage of the mill ends I have, but so far I'm thinking I'm gonna have enough for this sweater. So we'll see how it goes on. But, so this is the mill ends from Harrisville. It is like a natural colored yarn with a little bit, I think you guys can see there's that little bit of a greenish tint to it. It is so pretty. It's kind of like a mint seafoam green tint in there. So I thought that that would pair really nicely with my hand spun. Um, so there's different sections of color in my hand spun, but this hand spun was my most recently finished hand spun. It is, 100% Polworth and it is Frabjus Fibers and the colorway is Iris. So it's got lots of purples and lots of different shades of green, a little bit of blue, like a sky blue. So I just thought that these would be kind of amazing together and I am loving it. So I guess I should tell you what project I am making. I am making Junction by Andrea Mowry. And so this is squished up on my needles right now. So let me unsquish part of it over here. So it's a top down sweater and, ah, and just don't wanna get it off my needles. So it's a top down sweater and it starts with some brioche in the yoke. And I'm gonna just hold my needles shut here and try to try to show you guys what this is looking like. So there's three chunks of brioche in the yoke and then kind of like a lice pattern for the rest of the sweater. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So it actually started out with that mint green there. I love the way that this is coming out so far. I am so excited and between like the hand spun and then the rusticness of this Harris felt. This is, and the brioche, like this is so squishy and just, it's delicious. So, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't really like stretch it out the way that I want to without, I don't want to risk it falling off my needles. But this is like, this is my first uh, really, one of my first brioche projects. I just did brioche for the second time, two color brioche. Kitty, kitty, come here. <laughs> uh, in the shawlography shawl. So I was kind of waiting. I knew that I had that brioche section of the shawl coming up and that that would be great practice for relearning how to do the two color brioche. Cause I had only like when I designed Owen's Christmas sweater last year, I had done some two color brioche on the cuffs of the sleeve and on the bottom of his sweater ribbing I did in brioche but that was the only time I had ever done it and 
Um, I just wanted a little refresher before jumping into this project. Oh my gosh, it is so squishy. It is so pretty and I love how my hand spun is looking with this Harrisville yarn and in this design, it is so fun. So yeah, there's one more, there's one more section of brioche to do, which hopefully I'll do that tonight too. Maybe I'll finish, maybe I'll finish the hat and then knock out this other brioche section. So many things I wanna be knitting on right now. Um, yeah, and then I'll be able to get right into the, the laced stitch pattern and hopefully split for the sleeves before next week's podcast. That would be like the ideal place to get to, I think, is splitting for the sleeves for next time. That's gonna be my goal. So, love it, love it, love it, love it. Oh my gosh. So I was so excited to show you guys this. This is gonna be such a nice sweater. This is only my second ever project with my own hand spun, which I just dropped. Um, there's, there is just, there's just something about using your own hand spun yarn in a project that makes it so much more special. So I was so excited. Yeah, I think I have enough of both, of both the hand spun and I'm hoping that I have enough of the Harrisville yarn because I really don't know the yardage of it. I could, I guess I could lay it out and count like I would figure out for my own hand spun, but I'm just gonna go for it. So I did not swatch. I just cast on for size three. I did not swatch for this. So it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be fine. I do a lot of swatching. I didn't feel like swatching for this one. So I think that this is a really, this is a really great pattern for the hand spun too, because although I am getting more consistent with my hand spun, it, this is still, pretty inconsistent. There are some really, really thin spots. Overall, it's pretty similar, but occasionally I get like a bulkier section and occasionally I get like a super thin section. Like I think you can see like right there I've got, where is it? Like, like right there, I've got like a super thin, super thin stitch in there. But I think like the brioche helps to hide that and I'm really thrilled. So, Oh my gosh, if you guys spin your own yarn, make sure you knit with it too, because it is so satisfying to like use your own yarn in a project. And I can't wait to get doing that with my naturally dyed yarn too. I just have to decide what projects I want to knit. And I'm definitely gonna be casting on some socks. I wanna get like a shawl or a sweater or a shawl and a sweater. I just have so many projects that I want to be knitting on right now. And I need basically like eight arms and just a lot of extra time in my day to get it all done. So things are just gonna get done as they get done. I definitely want to be finishing projects that are well underway as well before starting a whole bunch of new things. Um, yeah, so, so much more coming soon. You really gonna take a bath again? I always take a bath on my podcast. All right, so speaking of spinning, Let's move on to spinning. Okay guys, so I still have both of my spinning projects that I am plowing away at very slowly, um, but they're glorious. So I have four bumps of this gorgeous Polworth silk fiber. Um, this was a limited edition colorway from Frab Just Fibers called Sweater Weather. So I don't think it's available any longer, but these colors are amazing. So um, I am trying to keep this cat out of all my things. Um, I am, I mean, it probably looks the same to you as last time, but I have spun more on it. Um, I did a spin with me video, which I talked about in the beginning of this podcast. So um, yeah, I spun a bunch more after that video. I think this is about where I'm left off now. And oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And I'm, I love, I'm getting like a very light fingering weight with this. So yeah, I'm hoping to end up with like a heavy fingering when I'm done with this one. I just love these colors so much. 
Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about the spinning today because I just did like the spin with me and that's where I talked about a lot of the, the things that I've been spinning with these fibers and I really haven't done anything further since filming that video. So if you do wanna know more about anything that I talk about in the spinning section today, be sure to check out that spin with me video. Um, but that's the first one. And then I also spent some time talking about my, my very difficult time spinning this fiber. I chose the wrong spindle. I know that I did. Um, I, what I might do is I had already spun with this, spin, with this spindle one singles. So what I might do is finish this one, because um, I had already started it, is I might finish this one on this spindle so that I have two that are similar. And then I think what I'll do is I will take your advice and switch to a much lighter weight spindle to spin up my last two bumps. That way I'll have like one bump that I spun with this spindle and a new spindle that I can then ply those together and then I can do the same. So I'll have two on the spindle and then two on the lighter weight spindle and I can combine them that way to then create a consistent yarn. Um, because I was worried that if I switch spindles mid project, then my resulting yarn wouldn't be consistent. So, but I think if I do half of it on the spindle and then I can do the other half of it on a spindle that I will enjoy the process more because this has been really frustrating. Um, yeah, I talked about it. This is a gorgeous fiber. Let me show you the fiber. So this fiber is Sweet Georgia Designs, and this is the color, I wanna say it's color, like falling leaves, I think is what it's called. And this is, this has alpaca in it, and it has merino in it, and does it have silk in it? It might have some silk in it too. Um, but I've never spun with alpaca before. The fiber staple length and combined with the weight of the spindle and the thinness that I want to spin this, it is just not working. I mean, it is eventually working on the spindle, but it is frustrating and not an enjoyable experience on this particular spindle. So I think I'm only gonna suffer through this spindle for one, for like the rest of, what I have here and then I'm going to switch and hopefully have a much more enjoyable experience spinning this yarn. So this, the second bump I haven't gotten too much into spinning, but I do have, so I'll show you the singles. Oh, and what it, so it's, yep, it's 20% silk, 30% merino and 50% alpaca. So that's what this one is. And so, I mean, I've, I spun a very, a very thin yarn with, with it, with this heavy spindle. I don't know, it was, it was frustrating, but I, I made it happen. And so, yeah, so I'm gonna spin up the rest so that I have two that look like this, and then I'm gonna switch spindles, and then I'm gonna ply together one from each. And then I should have a yarn that is consistent, I think. So that is my plan and that is my very brief spinning update. I am going to, um, I'm gonna finish up my knitting very quickly with the acquisitions because I do not have a lot to show you. Um, I just, I bought some of that same yarn that I'm using for the giveaway. So again, if you wanna enter the giveaway for this yarn then be sure to go to last week's podcast which is episode 39 and watch the podcast and you'll know how to enter um but yeah so let me show you let me show you that so let's go on into acquisitions okay so acquisitions hi again <laughs> what's up the tail behind my head Okay, well, she is determined to be in this video. So there she is. Hi, Melody. Um, so just ignore the, the tail sticking out of my head. But okay, really quickly, I forgot, I wanted to talk about this earlier, but this is fine to talk about in acquisitions. I 
one of the two yarns that I showed you last week in my acquisition section was my Knitterly Thing subscription yarn. And I had told you that I was going to wind it up and like cake it up and get started knitting on it. I have wound it up. This is one of the two colorways that I got. I think it's called Burning Leaves. Yeah, it's called Burning Leaves. It is so gorgeous. Look at those colors. So this is going to be my next pair of socks from Knitterly Things right here. So it's all ready to go. I just haven't cast on yet. So that was that was an acquisition that I showed you guys last week. Okay, and then, so I wanted to show you more of the yarn that I got for myself. Oh, okay, and then I do have it out here with me. Um, so I also, I, I had also picked out this, this cute little tape measure for the giveaway because I thought it went, it just matched. It matched this like really, really well. So this is part of the giveaways, this tape measure too. Okay. So I just basically, I had seen, they had like one random skein of a different type of yarn that I got. It's also, um, it's also a DK weight. This is their Tweed Me DK. And I think the color is called Colibri. I think that's the name of the color. And it is 85% um, Superwash Merino and then 15% Donegal Naps. So this is 231 yards. And so this is gorgeous, right? So I really, I had to have this. I'm not trying, I mean, I'm trying not to shop for yarn for myself, but I hadn't been in the yarn shop in quite a while and wanted to support and just, yeah, I couldn't help it. So I was looking for, I was thinking, you know, they only had one skein of this, but some of the other colors, whoops, Melody, you're knocking my stuff over. Okay, can you just settle? Can you just settle or do I have to push you down again? So they also had these two colors um, of the less traveled yarn, which I liked a lot too. This one is um, Essence of Lilac and it's their Enchantment collection. So this is their Arcadia DK, which is the yarn for the giveaway, 100% Merino and 50 grams. And then this one is called Cabin Wood from their Definition collection. So I don't know like what the difference is, if it's just like different colors, but those two colors I thought went super well with this yarn. So I got those and then because, um, because I love what I picked out for you guys for the giveaway so much, I had to get, I had to get it for myself too, because I'm selfish. I am so, I can't, I love doing giveaways, but I have a hard time parting with things. And if I'm giving something away, it's because I really love it and I want you guys to enjoy it too, but I don't want to miss out. So I got some of those for me also. And I just, I thought that the whole group of these just looked super, super lovely together. So I, I'm gonna try to use all of these together in some kind of project. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, but I also, I didn't feel too bad because I do not have very many, very much DK weight yarn in my stash. So, I mean, basically my stash is fingering weight. That's like basically most of my stash. So now I have a little bit of DK weight yarn that I can figure out a project for. But yeah, oh my gosh, these are just, it's just so beautiful, all of these together. They're all just like slightly variegated, slightly tonal. And they just, these colors together look so great. So the, the Tweety one is a different base, but I just, I think that they'll all work together. All right, so that is acquisitions. I am losing my light and I need to show you guys natural dyeing stuff. So we're gonna head on into natural dyeing. So natural dyeing, I can't stop dyeing yarn, you guys. I, 
I am just loving it so much. And I got some pretty fantastic colors this week. So uh, let's talk about this one first. And I have, well, this is two different bases. I'm gonna do it, ah, I'm gonna do it like this. So I, I, I have a gradient, but there, these, the lightest ones are on a totally different base, so they won't, I don't think they'll work together super well. But this was all dye, and I have such a hard time on camera showing the yellows, the light yellows especially. They just want to blow out constantly. But these were all dyed with pomegranate, pomegranate rinds. So, oh my gosh. Um, it, it's so great. These all look the same up here, but they're not. So these two, you're not gonna be able to see this on camera, I'm pretty sure of it. The camera just always blows it out. You can see it in real life. This was just with the exhaust bath. So I have this, this is on my singles base. And on camera, I'm sure it just looks like off-white or natural color, but it has like the most beautiful almost fluorescent yellow tint to it it's not really fluorescent yellow but it's like a pale fluorescent yellow tint it's very subtle and it's gorgeous so i don't know yet if i'm gonna leave all of my i think i've got four skeins like this total i don't know if i'm gonna leave them like this or add some other layers to it or not but there's the, that was the exhaust bath um, I really um, try to be zero waste when it comes to my dye colors. So I love using the exhaust baths and that's like, you get the most beautiful shades of pale, pale colors. So um, yeah, it's, it, it's amazing just the, like how deep things start out. So this was pomegranate and even in real life, I can tell it looks a lot brighter than it does on camera. But that looks pretty close right there if I hold it away from myself a little bit. So this was, you know, the initial, the initial dye bath. I've got four skeins or five skeins, four or five skeins with this much saturation. And then the first after bath are much lighter, not as light as the exhaust bath, but it's really, it's really hard to, to see the color on the camera. But so these these were all done with pomegranate. I think I've got I think I've got 10 skeins total between these two colors. And then I used the exhaust bath on some of my singles. I thought just to get a nice like base color. Um, also, I wanted to use the exhaust bath because uh, pomegranate has a lot of tannins in it. So you can use pomegranate as a mordant. I did also have alum on these skeins, so it's kind of not necessarily double mordanted, but my yarns were mordanted with alum and then going into the tannin bath. So the tannins make the, I dropped one, I always drop stuff. Um, you know, the, the tannins help the color adhere to the yarn. So you don't have to use a mordant if you are dyeing with something that has natural tannins in it, but you can and it helps um, with this, the alum helped get this much brighter yellow. It helps brighten the colors between the alum and cream of tartar. So, um, yeah, otherwise you might start out initially with something much lighter like this. So, yeah, so that was all pomegranate. So I thought that these turned out really beautifully. And then, you just want to sit here. Melody, this goes so well with you. All right, so then I'm gonna start with these because I've talked about these before, but this color, I mean, this turned out, I'm gonna say like pretty similar to this color from the giveaway, pretty similar. Um, I was able to dye up two more skeins of yarn and so this one is, and the pomegranate too, the, except for the singles base. All right, you, your tail is distracting me. You go that way. All right, 
Um, this is on my sock yarn base. So the sock yarn base is 80% merino and 20% recycled nylon. All of the yarns I dye are non-superwash. I figure if I'm going through the process of naturally dyeing the yarns, I don't want to have a superwash process on my yarn. So it's all non-superwash. And oh my gosh, these colors are insane. I love this color. This I got with Hidnellum mushrooms. And I am now out of my Hidnella mushrooms and I am so sad. I've been looking for them all week and I cannot find any more. Ugh, they're so hard to find. Um, I will, I, I hope you guys come with me on my, on my foraging journey when I release that video, that vlog video foraging because I think it'll give you a really good idea of how, I know that these colors are amazing but finding the exact types of mushrooms that you need in order to get these colors, I wish, I wish I could just like snap my fingers and be like, I'm gonna go get this today and I, I just know where to go and I find it and it's there. This, it's just not how it works with the mushrooms, unfortunately, I wish it was because this, this is becoming my favorite color to dye is this one right here. So I just, I got such a nice, I'll probably um, insert some photos. You guys might've seen some photos if you are following me on Instagram, because I posted some there. But I took some photos in some different lighting, outdoors, all of the same yarn. And, you know, just really seeing the tonal beautifulness of this yarn. So, Definitely some of the Hidnellum yarn will be going into the shop, probably in the form of mini skeins. And then let's talk about this one. Because this is another one that I am just, I am struggling to find the mushrooms to make more of this. I just, I had enough Cortinaria semi-sanguineous mushrooms Sanguineus, Sanguineus. Basically, the fun nickname for these is a surprise web cap. And um, I found a few for my foraging video. So if you watch that video, you can see what these look like too. Um, I've been on a hunt ever since I finished dyeing this yarn last week. I have been on the hunt for more of these mushrooms so that I can create at least one more batch. And I just can't find enough. I, I have like just the smallest handful. So I, I want to make more of this so badly, but I don't, I don't know if, if I'm going to be able to make it happen. I also don't know if I'm going to be able to part with this because it is my first time dying with these mushrooms. And I don't know how much I'll be able to find to keep reproducing it. I might, I might put these into mini skein sets so that I can at least keep a mini skein set for myself. So I just kind of have to see, like, I have to pick some projects to knit. I know that you guys have your eye on these colors, so I want to be able to share them with you. Um, but I need to let you guys know the finding the materials, the mushrooms that produce these colors. It's very seasonal and then it's it's kind of just hit or miss and luck and I, I am trying. I am, I am seriously definitely trying because these turned out amazing. So I had enough to just do one, just these three skeins. These are, th so this is 300 grams total. Each is 100 grams. Um, you know, so maybe I'll put these into mini skein sets so that I can at least keep, you know, a small amount of it for myself to work with because these colors just make me so excited and so happy. Um, so these were all mordanted with alum. This first one, 
and it, it, they came out like super tonal too. I think I might have had a few regular Quartenarius sanguius mushrooms in there, which are completely blood red. Um, and if you have, like, I need to live in Sweden. Are any of you guys in Sweden? Because apparently it's really easy to find this type of mushrooms in Sweden. And I don't know about shipping mushrooms overseas, but I would, I would buy them from you if you were willing to go pick me a ton of Quartenarius sanguineous or semi-sanguineous mushrooms. Where are my Swedish viewers? I need, I need help. I need help sourcing my mushrooms if you guys want these colors. Oh my gosh. So it's just gorgeous. And I think it's really interesting too, the ties that I added to help keep the yarn in place. You can see the ties there have a totally more pinkish tone to them. Pretty sure that was, you know, just, I think it was just acrylic even that I tied it with, like just kind of using whatever I, random things I have in my stash right now to add some ties. But this is just gorgeous. So that was the first skein. So I only, I knew that usually what I'll do is I'll put between three and five skeins of yarn in a dye bath, depending on how much dye material I have in there and i knew that with the amount of mushrooms that i had i would be lucky to get one saturated skein so i only put one skein in because you need quite a high weight of dye material to weight of fiber to get nice saturated colors and i just i was so eager to try it and i just only had such a limited amount so with my modest amount I mean, if you have a ton, you can get reds, but you know, I have not been able to find a ton. So there's that one. And then the second one that I put in, just one skein again, and it looked like I wasn't even gonna get that much color. And then I ended up with this gorgeous peach. And you can even see like right there, the ties, how pink they look on that. So I am very eager to work with these mushrooms more and get more of these amazing colors. So those first two together. And then I was able to get just enough color out of the exhaust bath. It's kind of like a hint of you can even see the ties pick up the pink really well, but there is a peach. I think you guys can see there's like a slight peach tone to this yarn. It is just gorgeous. So this, oh my gosh, I love these colors so much. It's so insanely crazy that mushrooms, can give incredible colors like this. Mushrooms. You just have to find the right ones because a lot of them just give you brown and a lot of them just give you yellow. And some of those colors are amazing too, but these just, they're in a, a league of their own. These colors are just phenomenal. Oh my goodness. So, um, let's see. That's all I brought out with that. I also, that's all I brought out to show you. I also did a really fun dye bath this week. It is still soaking wet, but drying. Um, I used autumn leaves this time from my oak trees. You guys have seen previously that I did the oak leaves in the spring, in May, so that they were all green. And I wanted to know what color, what different shades I would get out of like the red and orange and yellow ones that fell. So I collected a bunch of freshly fallen leaves that still had a lot of color to them and made a dye bath out of those. And some skeins, because the oak leaves have natural tannins in them, so some skeins I put in without a mordant and then other skeins I put in with alum mordanted wool and I got different colors. I got gold from the alum mordanted one and I got brown, like rich, gorgeous shades of brown that I haven't, haven't gotten those exact shades of brown. So different from the spring leaves that I collected. So 
that is really exciting. I'm trying to get as much out of that dye bath as I can because the shades are just amazing. Um, and I might be able to collect enough leaves before they just all turn brown and create another dye bath because these are some pretty fantastic browns and golds that I'm getting out of the leaf yarn. So that pretty much sums up the dyeing that I have been doing this week. Um, I think as far as naming my shop that I am going to stay on brand like a lot of you guys suggested and do something like Stop, Drop, and Knit Co. or Stop, Drop, and Knit Yarn Co. or Fiber Co. What do you guys think? And then I can shorten it to like SDK, but I think, I think if I just do like Stop, Drop, and Knit Co. then I can have like my naturally dyed yarns and then put things within collections and then that gives me room like my husband designs t-shirts so he has been talking about opening an Etsy shop so then maybe I can have him design some t-shirts would you guys be interested in in t-shirts at all knitting related t-shirts let me know because I'm opening an Etsy shop anyway so I think if I'm like the more general my name probably the better because then if I in the future wanted to bring in other things like project bags if I dyed some fabric and collaborated with somebody I mean I'm thinking in the future here but that would open it up to cover like a wider variety of things so that's where I'm leaning right now stop drop and knit co so do you think it should just be stop drop and knit co stop drop and knit fiber co stop drop and knit yarns yarn co I don't think yarn co sounds that great um, yeah so give me your thoughts on that as always thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so much for subscribing and liking my videos if you like this one don't forget to give me a thumbs up it really helps the algorithm the more comments you guys give me and the more thumbs ups um, yeah and don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed. Don't forget to go back to episode 39 if you're interested in entering the giveaway and make sure you leave me the comment over there. And thank you guys. I am so happy to sit down and chat with you guys again. And you guys are leaving me the most amazing comments on last week's video. So thank you all for that. And I look forward to sharing some foraging videos and another episode pretty soon. So have an amazing weekend and week ahead and until the next time, bye.